Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the head of global content at Informer, uh, the publishers of Script, Pink Sheet, In Vivo, and Generics Bulletin. We're here at the Biotech Showcase uh, 2019 in San Francisco, and I'm joined by uh, Stephanie Bova, who's a uh, managing partner of Hatch at Takeda. So, uh, Stephanie, I guess the first thing is Hatch at Takeda. You know, what is it and what's the relationship with Takeda? So Hatchet Takeda is a foundry and a private equity fund that focuses on digital health. It's a separate legal entity to Takeda, so we still have our venture arm that's an early R&D. We're solely focused on digital health and our investment thesis is really understanding what are those unmet medical needs that digital can provide, um, regardless of our portfolio of drugs? So oh, we okay. can we can invest uh, and or invent in things that really just help people. So different from the sort of Takeda Ventures, which has uh, a strategic focus, where it sometimes you know likes to identify technologies or compounds that can be taken in house in Takeda. You actually are. Uh, are more autonomous in, in, in the choices you make. Yeah, and our our leadership really thought that the focus being on improving patients' outcomes isn't is enough. So regardless of it if it hits our portfolio or not. So which I think is pretty unique to the industry, and I think it's something that people have always wanted to do. Um, it's, it's, it's actually very hard to set up something uh, so different and, and apart from the business, um, but I think we're, we're just kicking that off right now. So there's a lot of chat about digital health, so it's almost one of those um, you know, buzzwords that is now you know, thrown around at conferences like this. What does digital health mean? You know, what, 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 what definition do you use for digital health? So my definition of, of digital health is using a technology component to actually prove better health outcomes for patients. That doesn't mean it has to be completely a tech solution, right? I do think that the mixture of having some kind of a enabling technology along with some analog interactions actually improves the patient experience, right? So we look at things that have everything to do with uh, um, apps, which I, are, are pretty common, um, to more of uh, analytics, uh, platforms, services. It could have uh, medical technology components. Um, really, what interests me and gets me excited are the things that are going to be more medically and clinically validated that would integrate a number of different partners. So, so is it uh, you know, wholly patient-centric? Because some uh, digital uh, applications are more about sort of earlier, you know, sort of clinical research and, and helping, you know, that process. So, so at what point in the, I guess, the sort of the life cycle of a medicine mm -hmm. would you be normally sort of focusing on? Yeah, so I think less uh, about the life cycle of medicine. I think more about the life cycle of, uh, of a disease and what a person and their caregivers and their family would go through. Um, so at any given point, uh, there's different intervention points. And, and I think that's what, what's a little bit unique than the traditional uh, internal VCs that we have, uh, you know, see across the industry. Um, we, we really try to focus on, uh, on the patient problems, right? Um, I think that plays out in, 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 a number, in a number of different ways, right? Uh, n number one, um, we're, we're able to get these, uh, these products up and running fast, right? Um, we're, two, we're able to leverage the expertise within Decada um, to accelerate the startups that we, we fund. And number three, we have a very strong network of partners, uh, a number of payers, hospitals, providers, uh, consulting companies that actually can kind of surround the early startup and actually almost hypercharge it, um, which gives it a bit of advantage from other startups who are trying to figure out the complexity of healthcare on their own without those connections. We can, we can bring a, a lot of early experience. So rather than just sort of throwing some money into a, a startup, there's a, an ecosystem that you're trying to you know, put around it? We're super hands-on. We have entrepreneurs and residents in our program. Uh, we have a very hands-on board of directors. We take a, a very proactive approach of being involved um, you know, when things are in incubation. However, we hire professional management teams, right? These are not run by Decada. They're operated by, by people who have done this multiple times, right, and have those connections. We're able to, like any board, 
help open doors. Um, but I, I think it's important to know that we don't we don't actively operate any of these companies. Okay, so um, yeah, how much you, uh, have you got under management at the moment? So we have a hundred million dollar fund. Uh, we are actively inventing and investing, right? We're uh, hoping to harvest more towards the end. So I'd say for the next two to three years, we're going to be really scouting um, not only what the problems are in the market that are unsolved, right, uh, and where we can bring value, but also, you know, who, who's really interesting out there. And so that's what makes events like this um, and, a, and a lot of other events that, that are held throughout the year very interesting for us to attend. Uh, I mean, Takeda is a Japanese company. Um, you're based in Zurich. Um, this meeting here is in San Francisco. So is there any kind of like geographic, you know, sort of focus? Absolutely. Um, so Hatchet Takeda is based in New York City, right? It's kind of a, one of the epicenters of digital health and, and investors. Um, we have uh, offices in Los Angeles. We also have offices in, in Zurich. So we basically are always kind of going right now between uh, US, US and Europe. Um, in the future, I, I would be interested in looking at things that, that go beyond, but I think starting in, in US and Europe it gives you a good foundation to then grow into other geographies. Okay, so you know, if, I, if I was an entrepreneur, what, what is it that I would actually have to have you know, on my computer or in my bag that is going to you know, attract your attention or pique your interest in the first place? I think there's a few things. Um, number one, I'd be looking at you and your management team, where you came from, right? Because I'm, I'm really investing in your ability to execute on whatever plan you give me. I'd be looking at product market fit and really making sure that, 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 that there really is, uh, is something that you're solving for and not just applying technology and creating a, an, an extra complexity or step in, in any given process, right? Um, I like to use time uh, as a KPI to quant real impact, right? Like how much time are you saving me if I'm gonna change my behavior? Um, of course, the, 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 the financials in the business case. I'm interested also on whether or not you've gotten into contracts, um, either one time or recurring revenue, um, how you're going to get your profitability, who your other investors are. I think uh, you know, having a very, very solid pitch deck that has been rehearsed always helps. Um, and having a good network of advisors uh, around you that can help open doors to, to, to groups like us. Um, I think that's, that's the first thing that would get my attention. Okay, so in the Hatch at Takeda, you've uh, been around, what, 15 months or, or so. Have you made any investments uh, as yet that you can talk about? Yeah, we have uh, four active investments. Uh, four active investments. Two are still in stealth mode, so I'll uh, save the uh, debut for those uh, at a later time, if I may. Um, the first one was called Oshi Health. <coughs> Oshi Health is based in New York City. It is a, a patient-facing application that helps patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And it does three things. It helps you uh, learn more about your disease. It helps you track your patient-reported outcomes, right? And it helps you engage through a, a Q&A forum with expert advisors, uh, doctors, nurses, nutritionalists, etc. That information um, is actually uh, creating one of the largest da databases of phenotypic behavior uh, that we can see in irritable bowel disease. Uh, it's gone into a clinical trial in the UK across uh, 25 sites that's looking at ways to combine different types of data, including the one that OSHI provides, to see if we can predict when a patient is going to have a flare, right? when they're going to have a, a, an exacerbation of, of their disease. And that's really important, right? Because that helps everyone better plan. Um, healthcare systems, patients, their providers. Um, you can imagine how debilitating that can be. So, so who would be the, uh, the ultimate consumer there? Is it, is it the patient or is it their, their clinician? So right now, um, the way there's, I, I would say there's, there's, there's two parts of, of the business model. One is making sure that the OSHI app is so interactive and valuable that patients join. Right? Because if you don't have that stickiness factor, you don't, you don't have anything. Um, the business model is very interesting because that data is incredibly valuable to a number of different players in healthcare, right? Um, and what you can do with new data help can create new endpoints, it can create uh, you know, personalized care plans for patients. So I think the, the ability to, to, mo to, you know, to monetize how to interact with that is, is, is really, you know, there's multiple ways to play out. So I think it's, 
early days to see where they're going to go. Um, eventually, uh, OSHI, uh, I, I believe, will become a digital therapeutic. So it will uh, have enough clinical data to go through the FDA process and, and, and be approved. And I think what's nice about it is it doesn't tie to any specific drug. So you can have OSHI, you can have this support regardless of what your background therapy is uh, and, and what point in your disease uh, you are. And the, and the second investment you can talk about? The second investment is a company called Emily Scientific. So Emily Scientific really tries to more customize the patient experience as you want to get into a clinical trial. So it helps find you, it helps to recruit you in, it helps to look at the inclusion-exclusion criteria of the trial and actually uh, get you e-consented and sent to a site coordinator. Maybe that doesn't sound like something special. What's special is that it's all intended to put it into a real person speak, right? Like if you're having a, a discussion like this of, you know, how can, I, how can I help you get into a clinical trial? How can I help explain to you, you know, w without all this complexity in, in, in medical speak that a lot of people get confused by? How can you know? How can I use that to help my mom or my dad? And so I think it's it's important that you know people start to have better access to, to you know to, to clinical trials, but it has to be on, on on a patient's basis. Now, eventually, what we'll uh, what we'll do with Emily Scientific is have that uh, kind of extend into the clinical trials. Right? It can be a, a way to support people, um, to keep them engaged, to keep them from dropping out. I think you can imagine, like, it's very emotional going into a clinical trial. It's very intimidating. Um, and so the more tools that we can prepare people, um, you know, to have those experiences and, and perhaps benefit uh, from, from some of these therapies early on, I, I think would be fantastic. Good. All right. Well, look, Stephanie, thanks very much for uh, stopping by and talking about this. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you.